Right, I could have gone for the tap-in today and spoken about Winston Reid, which was going to be the video lined up, but I had a comment. And the comments are very much appreciated because it gives me ideas of things to talk about. I could have left it and gone for the tap-in with Winston Reid because uh, this will piss a few people off. Uh, many will agree, uh, many won't. Um, but you know what, the fan base is divided anyway, everything's so divisive now, I might as well go on and say it. The uh, comment was from JMA16, who says, Gonzo, do you think Gold, Sullivan and Brady have ruined West Ham? There's not a question that's divisive, but what I go on to speak about um, it is because everybody's just so different. So, Gonzo, do you think that Gold, Sullivan and Brady have ruined West Ham? Um, I don't even think there is a West Ham anymore. Not in the sense that we know. There's a trace of West Ham, certainly. There's um, there's remnants of it around. But actually, the West Ham that I started to support, the West Ham that many of us started to support, is long gone. In many respects, um, I'm sort of glad that I got to take my son and my daughter to Upton Park uh, to, to see a little bit. They were quite young, whether they'll remember it is another matter. Um, I do feel sorry for anybody that started watching West Ham on the last season of Upton Park and saw Payet doing all his stuff because they would have had a very, very skewed idea of what West Ham is all about. But I think what we're talking about is not the ruination of West Ham, which was JMA's question, have Gold, Sutherland and Brady ruined West Ham? It's been the clinical breakdown of West Ham. It's been the clinical destruction of what they see as a saleable asset and what to us was a was a community club, was a was something we loved, um, was an identity, uh, was a habit. Um, and it's all changed so much. Now, I don't believe, by the way, as as even bearing in mind what I've said, I don't believe that Gold, Sullivan and Brady have gone out to purposely target West Ham fans and to to destroy the very fabric of what they love. I think what it is, it's more a condescending and a patronising pat on the head saying, yeah, yeah, of course, there they are. We know what's best for you. We know you're upset, West Ham fans, at leaving Upton Park, but we know what's best. You'll be better off in the Olympic Stadium. You'll be better off over there. They knew there'd be a bit of kicking and screaming. They knew there'd be a bit of fuss. And they were willing to take that fuss on the chin because I think they had clarity of thought, a clarity of belief, let's say, in that we would be better off when we got there. Well, we're not better off since we got there. And this goes into the question. I'm, I'm not going to go and repeat what I said yesterday, um, by the way. I've, I cast your mind back to David Gold. David Gold was stopped in his car. As you know, it was very, very difficult to get in and out of, uh, of Upton Park through the gates, of course. Um, big car park on your way to the ground. Anybody that went there probably walked past the chairman's car on numerous times. The players' cars, the players would have to go and get in their cars. You had to face the fans. One day, um, David Gold got stopped in the street in his car. It was by one of the street vendors who asked, would he still have his job? When he got there. Now, as you remember, down Green Street, there were street vendors. There were people selling scarves. There was all that sort of thing going on. David Gold said, yes, don't worry. Everybody will get a job. Everybody didn't get a job. I think David Gold possibly believed that or possibly wanted it to happen. But when I said the clarity, they had a clarity of belief and they were doing the right thing, they didn't really have a clarity of purpose or certainly any clarity to know what it was actually going to be like when they got there, when we got to the Olympic Stadium. Because he wasn't in a position to promise everybody their jobs. Because we weren't owners anymore. We were tenants. And the landlord said, no, we're having our guys in. We're having our catering guys in. Westfield on the way to the stadium said, no, we're not having scarf sellers and, and pin badges and people selling sweets out of Tupperware tubs. Don't be ridiculous. We're not going to have that old burger van there. We're not going to have this, that, and the other. We're going to have our guys in. It's 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 small parts, but it's all part of, of the match day experience. And in many respects, in us moving over, we've ceased to be West Ham United. We're, we're, we're Stratford Olympic or, or something like that. And it's the remnants of West Ham that, that keep us going. It's the memory of it. It's 
is the claret and blue shirt, but even that changes every year, of course, now. The badge has changed. This is all part of the rebranding of West Ham, of course. It's the adding of London to the badge. So the old West Ham has gone. And what I hate a lot about that is a lot of time people will say, when, when you speak about this, I yearn for uh, Upton Park or the bowling ground, as, as, you, as you may have known it, and... I, I wish that was, you moan about it when, when you talk about it. And there's a way of shutting you down. And people say, well, that's gone. It's gone. Forget it. Don't talk about it. Move on, they say. And it's a way of, number one, shutting down any conversation about it, but, but dismissing your feelings, dismissing any any regret or any hurt that you might feel. But it's not right. I mean, conversationally, it's not the right thing to do. You can't dismiss something that was wrong just by saying it's gone. Forget about it. Otherwise, I'd nick your wallet. You can't whinge about it tomorrow. It's gone. Forget about it. The money's gone. There's nothing you could do about it. We're not going back. That's what they say. We're not going back. Get on with it. And it's all part of, I think, for myself, as I say, this is very much a personal thing. I wish I'm disappointed myself because I, 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 be I believed in it. I think, I don't think I went in blind. Um, I don't, I knew the things that are going to be sacrificed. I knew Nathan's eventually would go out of business. I knew um, that Ken's would probably go out of business. And all of those other things that were part of the match day ritual. I think I hoped that the street vendors would be invited along. I think I believed them when they said it. But I think I was almost willing as a West Ham fan after years and years and years of um, mediocrity, relegation, mid-table, you know, you know, the thing, you know, the sort of thing. I think I was willing to trade that identity and that authenticity of being a, a real, a real football fan of a real club for a bit of success. I think I bought into the dream, if you know what I mean, of, of moving to the Olympic Stadium, that that would yield the top four, um, trophies, whatever it was. I was I was bedazzled, do you know what I mean? Bewitched by the smoke and mirrors, razzle-dazzle, as, as Ken in Town Len um, put in his razzle-dazzle song. Um, I think I bought into it. Well, of course, we know now that that's just not happened. What makes it an awful lot worse having bought into the dream and a dream not happening, I think, is... Um, the, the, the fact the fact that as soon as we were taken there, a few things happened. We were told not to stand. Don't stand. Don't stand up. Now, I know that Upton Park wasn't always really noisy. Well, not all of it was anyway. But you, you could you could bet your ass if you could if you could do such a thing. That the top of the east stand by the screen was noisy. Um. The top of the old South Bank was noisy. Bobby Moore Lower was noisy. There, there were always pockets of noise, even on the quiet games. And you felt because the distance to the pitch, <laughs> even more so before that old West Ham was built. I mean, the chicken run ceased to be the chicken run for quite a long time because because of the, the rebuild of the West End, but that, that's another argument. But there was still enough proximity to the pitch to feel connected with the players. You didn't feel an opposition player could run for a throw-in and um, and get away with any cheekiness, you know. You you could still let them know you were there as a crowd. Um, and, and, I th and I think having been brought over and, and then if we find ourselves, we're to totally detached from the field of play. There's another promise of David Golds. We wouldn't be any further away than we were at Upton Park. <laughs> I bet they wish David Gold would shut up, actually, uh, because he's made a few promises. And I think probably David Gold made the promises because he felt... Um, I think David Gold probably felt it more than the others because he, he did grow up on Green Street, as, as we've heard many, many times. And I think he wanted to believe. And, and I doubt that David Gold, when he steps into a room with Sullivan and Brady is totally impervious to the direction in which they want to take the club anyway. And as I say, I think they all probably thought it was best for West Ham. So we find ourselves where we are now, and it is not very 
West Ham United's. That's all. And I, and, I, and I look here and I think, an answer to JMA's question, do I think Gold, Sullivan and Brady have ruined West Ham? That West Ham, that West Ham of old, no longer exists. Many of the businesses no longer exist. I think they were going anyway. It, let's be perfectly frank and blunt here. The local community, the demographic around Upton Park has changed so much in recent years anyway. Much of Long gone are the days when the residents of Green Street walked out of their houses and went to the ground. A lot of the local community had no interest in West Ham whatsoever. I think it's always going to be a struggle for a pie and mash shop, a boozer, a calf to survive. Most of the fans moved out. Essex, Kent, Romford, wherever. But I do think they were hanging on, and they were hanging on by the, by the skin of their teeth. And it was the final nail in the coffin, West Ham moving. But as far as the club were concerned, it was a sacrifice worth making. Those businesses, let them go. The proximity to the pitch is a sacrifice worth making, as far as the club are concerned. The branding, the badge, they did their little bit. They consulted some people, and then... After they'd consulted some people, they still went with the original, you know, the, the updated badge that people were, were quite unhappy about. I don't I, I didn't mind the removal of the castle. I've got old I've got old Billy Bond's kit, actually. One of my first kits, old Billy Bond's kit. I've got um with no castle, hammers, that's fine. Not a problem at all. And sometimes I look at um other grounds. And when I go to Chelsea away. And I look at it, and I've got no love for Chelsea in particular, but I look at their grounds at 41, 42,000, and I think, particularly when Abramovich was looking to build something bigger, and I looked, I thought, you don't need to. It's pretty damn good. It's, it's full up. And 40,000 is about right in terms of hardcore fans. I certainly, you, you'd struggle to convince me that 60,000 make more noise than 40,000. They should, of course. 20,000 more people make sense. They, they don't. You're diluting it. You're diluting it with tourist fans, new fans, different fans. And, and again, that feeds into why we're not really West Ham in the way we were. But that was part of the plan as well. Because again, the board would have believed that that was good for us. New fans, build the brand. Bigger club. Awareness, tour in Asia. Tour all over the place. But it, does, it hasn't quite happened and it hasn't quite worked out. And now I look back as someone that was almost willing to sell my soul on it and I think well um what's what's gone on and at the same time where the club has changed we got a whole social media scene and 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 this this what you're watching now so much has changed I've got to take my part and I'll play my part I jump on a flaming video and do a video every day but as that's changed, as everybody is able to, to give their opinion, which is what they've been able to do for some years now, be it we've got a forum ourselves, but on a forum you're, you're a little bit more accountable for what you say because you've got to have a membership and you, you post every day and people get to know each other. So people tend to uh, keep a cordial, um, a cordial manner when they speak to each other. It's not like we don't get trolls on the forum. Yes, we do, but there's a, a cordial manner. And you get to know people, the same people you post with every day. Social media is funny. I mean, you could post on social media. No one will read it. it just disappears down the line. You could put, put your heart out about West Ham on social media. Might not even get read. Lucky, might get like, hey, you know, but it, it might not get read. Forum's different. People are engaged with you. That sort of thing. But as, as that's all changed, and as West Ham has changed, and this, and YouTube, and Twitter, and all the rest of it, people are getting... Um, it's weird. You're sort of almost in the in the in the cult of intolerance. So I'll tell you now. I've seen three things this week. Totally intolerant of anyone else. First one: if you don't go to the West Ham Way event and you drink somewhere else, that's weird. Why would you do such a thing? That's that's that's. I found that very very odd to to read that. I think the West Ham Way event is a cracking event. I think anybody that wants to go there and sit down and, and see some legends and all the rest of it brilliant but you should be able to go somewhere else without having your um authenticity of a west ham fan questioned the other one what was the other one if you don't eat uh, the rib man roll you are you really a west ham fan if you have a hot dog and said what 
Well, where has this come from? And the other one was, if you read a certain website, you're not a West Ham fan. What? Well, you know, where, where have these things come from? Why can't I drink where I want, read what I want, and eat what I want? And who is policing who's a West Ham fan and who isn't? And it's just this intolerance on social media for anybody else that is doing something that I don't know, that whatever, the West Ham hierarchy deem not to be done. And it's not just that. That's, that's the bigger level stuff. It's the small stuff. You want to see Cresswell at left back? Someone else wants to see Masuaku? There'll be some people who've got no, no tolerance for your difference of opinion at all. Um, What was it? I went... Uh, Bournemouth game, Bournemouth game. I thought, um, who was I think? I thought Declan Rice man a match. I said it at the Bournemouth game. Did my review. Somebody, a lot. I mean, somebody came on in the comments. I mean, went really mad that I hadn't chosen Yarmolenko. Well, I was there. I hadn't chosen Yarmolenko. I'd chosen Declan Rice. Thought I can choose Declan Rice, can't I? Um, and I couldn't. And he was angry, angry that I hadn't. And. Uh, I thought, whoa, you know, and it's fine for me. I put myself out there. Do you know what I mean? I, I do these videos. I'm going to get certain comments. But it's a, it's a, it's a lack of tolerance. And, and what I'm saying is, whilst the fans themselves necessarily haven't changed, I do think there are a load of new fans. I think the way the fans act has changed. I think the stadium's changed. I think the whole club's changed. The fabric, the players change so quickly now. Got poor, poor old Mark Noble there. Fighting. Fighting a good fight. Trying to repel... Um, the tide of um, of just new player after new player after new player. Chris Akabusi, we did a video with Chris Akabusi last night, made a great point, Akabusi. Akabusi said it's going to be really hard for the players to turn it around because there's not enough Brits in there. I didn't give it much thought, actually, but I think he was right. I think he was right, you know, about these flamboyant players come over and actually it's time to dig in. No wonder Snodgrass has come in and done so well. But it it just goes back to JMA's question. Do I think Gold, Sully and Brady have ruined West Ham? They have torn apart the very fabric of West Ham to it almost doesn't exist. Everything that you think can divine, uh, divine? De define the identity of a football club is almost gone. The stadium, the community... Well, even the training grounds change. Not that that should bother us. It's um, as I say, the stadium community, the fans, a massive, massive uh, migration of fans, of course, as well. You know, twenty thousand new fans, and, and and even the way everyone's acting amongst themselves as well. The whole thing has changed. It is barely recognisable from ten years ago at Upton Park, and. Uh, I, I, I hope Canning Town Lane won't mind me saying this because I, I think he found it a little bit uh, a little bit odd as well. I'm going to tell the, I'm going to tell the story. He's good enough, mate, for me to hopefully he, he won't mind that I tell the story. And what it does, it goes into feed into this this cult of of whatever populism or whatever is going on at West Ham. Down the boats on Saturday, Stuart Pearson and David Cross were stood next to Canning Town Lane. <laughs> Somebody came up. To Canning Town Len and said, Ah, you're Canning Town Len, aren't you? And that's wrong. They should have David Cross, Stuart Pearson. What what? That's who should have been going on to. You're the Legends FA Cup. Come on. It's a weird place. It's a weird situation, West Ham. It's not the same. It's barely recognisable. Anyway, sorry, I I didn't mean to depress you, but I had to go with that. I had to go with that subject, really. I mean, that was that was the best question. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk about Winston Reid. Maybe tomorrow I'll talk about something a little more uh, light-hearted. But um, as I say, just just traces, traces, residual traces of West Ham left now. Um, anyway, <laughs> what more can I say?